Uh, man, it was some kind of show Friday night. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, that crowd was great, and so was the football team. Justin Fuente joins us. First of all, Coach, congratulations. Uh, an amazing scene and really an amazing performance. Well, I appreciate it. Um, I'm really happy for our players. Uh, it, it was probably the most electric atmosphere of of any sporting event I've ever been to, you know, from the opening kickoff to the, to the last play of the game, the energy never left the stadium. Our, our fans deserve a tremendous amount of credit for the role they played in, in helping us win that game. Just happy for everybody involved, our players and, and fans alike. Was there a moment of like, wow, here comes the adrenaline rush. I mean, was it going through the tunnel? Was it on the field in pregame when you saw the people start to work into the seats? Because I know in July you talked about it with us at the kickoff that it was going to be, you know, such a refreshing environment to have people back in the seats after what happened last year. But when did the adrenaline hit you Friday? Was it going through the tunnel or was it sometime earlier than that? No, I think it was earlier than that. It was, you know, they were announcing – our starting lineups mm-hmm. and I mean, the place was just going crazy. And <laughs> it was like, usually that's a little bit of a ho-hum announcement, you know, like, you know, starting at linebacker from Shelby, North Carolina, Dax Holyfield and everybody just, you know, kind of goes about their business, but like the whole place in announcing the lineups was just going bananas. And it, mm-hmm. and it, it's been a while since you've heard that roar and felt that in your stomach. You know, and just walking around pregame, you could tell there was just this this sense of energy and purpose. Uh, you know, there were 66,000 people there that, that came to serve a purpose in that game, and they certainly did. Coach, I just mentioned to Wes before we brought you on, I, I thought your guy sent a, a message in the opening drive. I mean, it was, first of all, the play calling was spot on. The execution was great. And you really kind of punched North Carolina right between the eyes and just said, hey, guess what? 60 minutes, boys, let's go. And, and I, you know, again, you know, it's one drive. we still got another 50-some-odd minutes to go. But I just thought it was a tone setter for the rest of the evening. Well, it was certainly a great way to start. You know, we, um, we wanted to make a concerted effort to um, not, not just run the football, but, but try to take up some, some clock. Mm-hmm. You know, like I really wanted – you know, Sam Howell's a fine player, but I really wanted him to spend a good portion of the evening standing on the sidelines. And we we accomplished that in the first half. We did not do as as good a job as we needed to of that in the second half, and our defense answered answered that challenge. But it was a great way to start the game. You know, our offense came out, and we ran the ball pretty well and had one or two big plays in the passing game and got a touchdown and kind of set the tone from there on out. All right, not that you need pocket analysis from like Roddy Jones and me who were in Pittsburgh getting ready to do a game the next day and we're sitting watching the game and Roddy said, if I'm Virginia Tech, I'm putting Braxton Burmeister, Blackshear, whoever they want in that backfield, I'm going to run behind that offensive line. Those guys up front took a challenge on uh, in the offseason at some point. They were kind of the cog that uh, that looked like powered the engine for you. Yeah, we feel pretty good about the, about those guys. You know, we lost a first round draft pick in Christian mm-hmm. Darisol last year that that you know was a fine player, but uh, you know we've got several other guys I think you know are, are going to have careers in the NFL. So um, they've played a lot together. They've got experience. Uh, we've got a couple new guys working in there that seem to have kind of fit in the group uh, seamlessly. So uh, we feel good about that. I hope we can stay healthy there and and continue to bring those guys along because um, we do have a little bit of talent up front. Coach, it's a line of scrimmage game, and I know you love that. Uh, We're sitting here talking about what you did on the offensive side. But, you know, North Carolina returned five offensive linemen and, of course, all-world Sam Howell. But, man, I thought your guys on the defensive front got after them too. I I think your team just said, hey, listen, tonight we're going to be the more physical tougher football team well we you know we've got all our guys back on the d-line too so mm-hmm. you know I, and that that's kind of my my gut reaction is we got a bunch of guys that played a bunch of snaps on the defensive line as well they're older and they're stronger they're more mature they certainly understand what we're trying to get accomplished better than we did a year ago uh through all of that stuff so um i'm not sure anybody 
uh, knew exactly what it was going to look like, but I, I have felt good about the progress we've made on the defensive front. Um, and some of that's just frankly due to maturity and w- time in the weight room and the development of our program. Um, but our mentality was, was, was spot on and our guys were ready to play. I mean, we'd heard a lot about our opponent and, uh, we were ready to prove that, that, uh, you know, that we, we, at least for one week had a, had a decent team. All right. Uh, let's go to your quarterback because you know, a healthy Braxton Burmeister is a totally different Braxton Burmeister, right? I mean, you got him to a point where he looked as comfortable and as confident as at any other time he's been with you on Friday night. Did you have an indicator of that through the spring and obviously into the fall camp that that was going to be the case? Well, you know, I really felt good about him last year. And mm-hmm. it, it, think back, he, you know, he started the first – couple games for us last year and and played well and I really felt good about the progress he's making he was he was really set back by three broken toes and probably would have played more last year for us if he hadn't gotten hurt and then played uh towards the end of the season so we've seen this coming you know certainly when Braxton knows this he you know there's some execution things that we've got to be better at certainly in the second half in order to, to to be as efficient as we want to be but um, what, what you saw, at least in the first half from Braxton is what we've seen, uh, for a couple of years now in practice mm-hmm. and, and during a couple of the games we've gotten to play in. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.